Deuteronomy, and so we're going to stand and read alternate verses at this time, and Sister Cooper will come and lead us into, it's in your book also, so we're going to read alternate verses. Shall we bless the Lord? We're in the house of the Lord. Can we get a praise in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Praise God. God is worthy. Um, Deuteronomy 30, and we're going to read alternately. Praise God. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. And if any of thine be driven unto the parts of heaven, from then to the Lord thy God gather thee, and from then to thee first. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous 
in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. For this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Neither is it beyond the sea, that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them. We'll read 18 and 19 together. I denounce unto you this day, that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan, to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to, to Jacob, to give them. Praise the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord? Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. Our oh, mother Jesus. Praise God. Don't bother to sit. We're going to sing a song and then we're going into our greetings. Just turn your book again on to um, page 34. We're going to sing this one quick and then we go into our greetings for the night. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 34. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. Oh, ye ever laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I your Lord will bless. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me.
Come on, raise your hands and bless the God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Miss Amina, go down there. Miss Amina, go down there. For me, here is the fire. I won't go down there. Amina, go down there. going down there. It's burning down there. So we decide we're not going down there. But if we are from the Caribbean, especially Jamaica, we cut it. This is our language. So we say we're not going down there. It's mean there. Okay? So let somebody interpret for you. One, two times. And you who are you? Viewing by you stream, it's there. Go down there, okay? So since we don't learn it in the English, we are gonna go and sing it in the pattern. Miss Amina, go down there. Miss Amina, go down there. Oh, me here, say 
sit with a praise in your mouth. I am not just singing the song because it's so nice, but I know he is my deliverer. I know when the doctor said I must go home and walk between the raindrops. I know when I told my husband that you don't have to worry, I can go home now because everything was sucking out of my chest. For one year I couldn't sleep. I don't know what night was. Yes, I had to take all the pills there was. The pink one, the white one, the inhaler, everything. I know what I'm talking about. Yes. I know when the ambulance came. And in there was hot as hell and I was going to the hospital. My, my, my. I could have passed away. Yes. So when you, I'm singing, it's my deliverer. I know what I'm talking about. Yes. I know what it is. To drive from Westmoreland to Montego Bay with my breath coming out and I don't know where to get help. I know what it is. St. Elizabeth. Elizabeth to Montego Bay. When I reached Montego Bay, there was no help. Can you excuse me? I was sneezing for half a day, peeing up myself. I have to use two towels between my legs. I know what it is. Amen. So if I'm singing, Jesus is my deliverer, don't even go there and stop me. Come on. I know what it is. Amen. To kneel on my knees for the whole night because if I get up, the pain is so much in my chest. I can't move. I know what it is. At midnight. When, I, when my husband said, take the pill, please take I said, if God don't come through for me, he said, I'm going to die, but I'm not taking any pill. I'm going to believe God. So it is a death. I know pill, but I'm not taking the pill tonight. And if he doesn't come through for me, well, that's it. Come on, come on. And 
here I am today. You better help me praise God. Hallelujah. I know what it is. When things start coming out of my skin and we don't know, I've got a doctor and they, don't, they just couldn't diagnose my case. My sister there, she said, maybe I eat something. No, it just couldn't go away. But I thank God that Jesus came in on time. Amen. So if he hasn't done anything for you, he has done something for me so I can sing. And I can jump and I can shout and I can run. Because I've experienced this man who said he's a deliverer. Hallelujah. You better help me praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Give him all the glory. And if you don't experience him, it doesn't make sense you sing and talk about my God is a millionaire and I'm stepping on gold and all them excitement, them and them big words and loud music. Are you not experiencing God? Come on, give me a break in here. You better help me praise God. If you can't praise God for yourself, praise him for somebody else. Praise him for who he is. Praise him that he's God. I know what it is to cough. But Jesus came true for me. And I'm living today. The devil is a liar. Should I kill me when him can? Can't catch me again. I'm not running for the life. So if you are running for your life, I'm sorry for you. Not running, gone away. I'm staying right here and look the devil in his face. He's a liar. Yes. I found a new life. I'm not running for mine. So if you can't run, go on. Our right, pastor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be this. I'm, I'm gonna be this. Because next year I want the job. Okay. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today I'm happy. Today I'm happy in Jesus. I haven't received any money yet, but I'm still happy in Jesus. Oh, we have a number. Could you bring the church? We have a number of churches that are visiting with us on tonight. And so we want to acknowledge them. And as they give brief greetings, we appreciate that very much. Come on, bless the name of the Lord again. You see, you, you, you see, yes, boss, I know, I, I know the time is good. So. But you have to do it right. The, the, the psalmist says, I will enter in his gates with thanksgiving. Yeah. So you see, from you enter the gates. Hard yeah. oh, through the service, supposed to say, thank you, Jesus. You know? yeah. But if you don't enter with thanksgiving. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have a number of churches on here tonight. Praise the name of the Lord. And we thank you for visiting with us. We have Pen. Pen. Penuel Tabernacle. Apostle Calendar. And we have deep, <coughs> Deeper Life. Oh, Jesus, last night they went deep. They went too deep. We'll leave them for last. Got them go too deep there tonight. I love to stay and fix up at the church and. You, you, you know what happened? You know, if we are, if we are allowed, we should to preach until today we still have it. You, know, you don't know? Oh, Jesus. Bishop Scott? <laughs> we had to, somebody had to take up his Bible last night. I saw him. Okay. Yeah. He was like a preaching machine. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Minister Ebert, what did you give him to eat yesterday? Oh, it's this? Oh, that's why I'm behaving like this. Okay. I, I'm going to leave enough for you. Apostle Kalenda, could you come, sir, and bring us short greetings? Come on, give it up for him on tonight. Bless the Lord. 
praise the Lord. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Just wave your hands in the presence of the Lord and magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who was and is and is to come, the Jehovah Jireh, the Jehovah Nissi, ah, the Jehovah Hel Rohai. Come on, somebody give him glory. Somebody exalt Elohim Adonai. Somebody give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords glory for he is worthy to be praised. Greetings to the host pastor, Dr. Chambers and Minister Chambers. Praise the Lord. It's good to join you in this time of convocation, convention. Praise the Lord to all the ministers and worship team. Praise God. Musicians, ex accept greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. To all the beloved saints, just put your hands in the air and just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Greetings, greetings, praise God. Then the theme declares it may look impossible, but God can make a way. Just turn to your neighbor quickly and say, God can make a way. The preacher is here, I won't preach. Bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He's very obedient. Eh? Praise the name of the Lord. God in you. Then we have Church of God Deliverance Temple, Bishop Williams. Will you come, sir, and give us a short greeting? Hallelujah. We just want to give God thanks. You know, he's worthy to be praised. Our five year of convention, we give God praise. Just lift your hands and tell God thanks. Just lift your hand and give God the praise. We deserve to get the praise. We deserve to get the glory. We deserve to get the honor. So tonight we're going to give God the praise. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. But when I talk about the goodness of Jesus. And what he has done for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Tonight I just want to extend greetings to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, who is the head of our life. Tonight I'm happy that I can stand here another time for the fifth year of anniversary. I know it's hard, and I know the fight that it goes through to stand up, but keep on holding on. I see the text that you have here. Praise God. Amen. It may look impossible. But at the end, there's a light of the tunnel. So tonight, Bishop, I just want to encourage you and the First Lady to keep on holding on. I want to greet the rest of the Bishop, Bishop Herb Eberts, and all those wonderful saints in Christ, all the dignitaries on the podium, and those that's in the pew. I have alongside with me my wife, amen, and I have my missionary, Missionary Holly, here with me tonight. So we just come to fellowship with you. We just come to just lift you up. Amen. So God bless you. And I know that the preacher is here. Uh, you know, when I hold the mic, it's a different thing. But let me run. Amen. Run. Praise the Lord. I, I, I appreciate you, sir. And you know what I appreciate Bishop Williams for? There are sometimes there are a number of invitations and you can't go everywhere. That's right. You know, it is so many. And sometimes we end up not going by sometimes. But it would still come. And I really appreciate that. And we promise this year we'll we'll try to stretch it to see how far we can go. But we still fear good share good fellowship. Praise the name of the Lord. We have Bethesda in the house. Um Brother Logan, do you want to say praise the Lord, sir? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You're okay with that, sir? Because I'm okay with that. Praise the name of the Lord. Then we have... Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Yes, we have plans to come on Friday night. And, uh, okay. But there's a funeral at the church, and uh, they asked us to do the word, so I won't be able to make it on Friday. We 
understand. We just come together a little appetizer. Yeah, they're supposed to return on Friday, but I hope they may be something. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God for that. The reconciled family in Christ, Pastor Lloyd McClockin is here. Could you come and greet us, sir? Come on, do better than that. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. Can somebody praise him tonight? Come on, give the Lord a mighty praise. Hallelujah. If you're in love with your Lord, somebody worship him. Praise God. God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. We thank God for his loving kindness and keeping us throughout the course of this day so we can gather to worship him. And not only to worship him, but to fellowship with one another. There's no way we can say that we're only going to come and worship God. We must have fellowship with one another. Praise God. Amen. I greet all the pastors and bishops on the platform. Amen. Pastor Chambers, all the saints of this household, I greet you in Jesus' name. I greet everyone that is here tonight. Praise God. Just want to ask those that are with, amen, with me tonight just to stand and let us give God praise tonight. Stand that you're here tonight. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for my, amen, for my wife. Thank you, Jesus. You know, many years ago, I remember, um, I told some person that I'll, I'll kill for my wife. And they were upset and vexed with me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Love her so much. I'll, I'll kill every demon and every devil. That's right. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God is a good God. We say God is a good God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a blessing to be here tonight. Praise God. Amen. It's a feast on God's word. And as, I, as the text was read tonight, the convention text that was read, amen, there's a word in there that jump out at me and it says that they may know that I am the Lord. Yes. I declare to you tonight that this convention, praise God, when it is over, amen, men must know who God is. Yes. Come on somebody, hallelujah. Yes. Amen. When God will work in our lives, it, that, it is that others may know who God is. Yes. Amen. If they don't know who God is, then we must check, amen, what is happening in our life. Yes. Because God wants to use us, amen, that the world will know who he is. Yes. The Bible says that God raised up Israel so the rest of the nation would know who God is. God will work through Israel. Amen. Praise God that the rest of the world would know who he is. And so tonight as we gather in this convention, even for the rest of the week, all that is done is that God must get the glory that men may know who God is. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. What do you kill for me, Pastor? Everything. Almost? Okay. Tell, tell me later. Tell me later. That's my apple in my pie. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, give it up for you. I, I'll tell you if you tell me later, okay? Okay, we have greater work. Greater word in international ministry. Greater word. Greater word. Greater works. Greater works. Praise the name of the Lord. It's greater works. Somebody put words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word, at his word, at his word. We just want to thank God that he has given us a word. Amen. I just want to recognize the host pastor, Reverend Chambers and First Lady and all the members of Rescue the Perishing and to all the pastors, ministers, Greetings from Greater Works Ministries. Praise the Lord. Praise you know, I I was told and I decided I wanted to be here tonight because I you know tomorrow and Friday night I won't be here. Because on Friday night I have a funeral service, so I, I you know and we have to get ourselves prepared. So I said I want to be here 
So I got myself ready, you know, just to say, if my wife come in, then in time. I'm so glad my daughter came and I said, you better take care of my wife. Yeah. I want to be here. There is a word, and I want to know what God has to say to the church. So I'm going to sit back and wait on the Lord Amen. to speak to me. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We also have Redemption Life Tabernacle. Okay. Okay. It's it's writographical error. That's okay. It's, 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 it's right. It's not typographical. It's writographical error. All right. So it wasn't typed. It was right. It was written. We bless the name of the Lord. We have in the house. We have some greatness in the. Oh Jesus. Pastor Williams, could you come, sir? Amen. Thank you. Bless you. The psalmist said, I bless the Lord at all times. Yes. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I give the highest praise to the Lord. I greet uh, Dr. Chambers and Minister Chambers, or the bishops, and the rest of ministers and all the saints. I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. Yes. It's a pleasure for us to be here tonight, to not to look what you're doing, but to worship. Come on, Everybody say worship. worship. Amen. And to celebrate with you. Amen. And you know, tonight is Wednesday night, and it's not that easy to get members out. But I have uh, five with me tonight. I'm going to ask those who came with me from Redemption Holy Tabernacle to stand. Bless you, bless you. Bless you. Wonderful. I have Mr. Hellis here, give him a hand, please, and my lovely wife, Zoni. Amen. Amen. And we are here to worship. Amen. And it's a pleasure to be here. And we must give the preacher plenty of time. Yes, of course, so, I'm, so I'm going to decrease yes. and let somebody else increase. Yes. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have greatness in the house on tonight. All the Christians, raise your hand. Oh Lord, royal priesthood, chosen generation, peculiar people, set apart, greatness is in the house. But we have from Liberty All, somebody say Liberty All, Cathedral of Praise, no other than Dr. Bishop Herbert Scott. And he's going to come, and he know, he's, he's, he's around a long time, so he knows what it is to greet. Amen. So he's going to greet on tonight. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody that we love and we appreciate. Yes, Somebody that has been there for us. Yes. Somebody who understands when no one understands. Somebody I can go to. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Dr. Chambers. Amen. And his beautiful wife and all the members of the clergy that are here this evening i'm going to ask those that came along with me just to please stand would you please amen god certainly is a good god and we praise him for all that he is doing in the house amen i noticed the theme here it may look impossible but god can make a way amen. the scripture that's associated with that is the book of exodus chapter 14 and naturally that puts me in mind of moses taking god's people amen towards the land of canaan we are told that the holy spirit rerouted them and told them to go backtrack amen. go back to where they are coming from. And the Holy Spirit specifically told them to go to a place called Pihahiroth. Yeah. And that place there means a place of liberty. But when they got to Pihahiroth, there was a red sea in front of them. Amen. And behind them, here comes Pharaoh and his host. And either side, here comes a high mountains. Where do you go? Amen. Pihahiroth means a place of liberty. But sometimes your place of liberty don't look like a place of liberty but we are told that the Holy Spirit went behind them it's as if God is saying I got your back and when they went through the Red Sea God gave Pharaoh a bath that he would never forget God bless you
no one will forget that. Right? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We have also redemption holy. Okay, that's gone already. And the last on our list on tonight is Rock of Holiness. They are in the house and you're gonna come. Pastor. 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 This is Pastor Mackenzie. You better put your hands together and make him welcome. He's Pastor, eh? Praise the name of the Lord. Greetings, Rescue the Parish, and greetings, Dr. Chambers, each and every one of you in the house tonight. Uh, as our first lady here from Rock of Holy Deliverance Ministry, my name is Minister Mackenzie. I'm just going to quickly ask those that are here with me to stand. I know my wife and one of my daughters went down, but the rest of you that are in the congregation, please stand. God bless you. And quickly, I'm going to ask us to just change our position for one minute. Each and every one stand up on your feet. Throw your hands in the air and just give God our praise and our worship. We are in convention tonight. Give God our worship. Give God a praise. You know, our first lady said a while ago that, you know, she was under the weather for one whole week. I was under the weather. It felt like my head was just there was so much pressure, couldn't breathe, struggling to breathe. Went to the doctor to give me pills. I took five today and I had to take, and I have to take two more today. But you know what? There's a certain pill called a gospel. Oh, yeah. oh. That all we need is one dose. Yeah. One dose of this gospel. So even though man might say it looks impossible, with God, he can make a way. God bless you. Lord, we have come to the end of our greetings on tonight. Could we all stand and raise your hands in the air and just give God a praise. Just reflect for a minute or two. You might not have a good day today, but still worship God. I don't know what the doctor tell you, but just give God some glory. I don't know what the neighbor did to you, but just give God some glory. I don't know what they did at the wrong place, but just worship your God. Ah, uh, not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be on tonight? Come on, the doctor does not have the final word. The final word is with God. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and make welcome our host pastor on tonight, Reverend Chambers. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, give the Lord a praise, everybody. We just lift your hands to him right now. Say, Father, I stretched my hands to thee. No. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, I'm here to raise the offering and put on the speaker. Amen. So I'm gonna ask you to go in your pocketbook, your tread bag, amen. Your, 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 your umbrella bag, whatever you have tonight, amen. We want to be a blessing, glory to the Lord. And I know you, you came to be a blessing amen. to this ministry. Because if I come by your church, I come That's not right. only to give God praise from my mouth, That's but also financially. To bless that ministry. I want to ask Bishop Herbert Scott, sir, could you want to raise the offering for the Son of Blessed Thank you, sir. All right, praise the name of the Lord. All right, shall we stand right now? Stand right now. Come on, stand right now and just uh, hook up with somebody, would you please? Just hold their arms, their hands. Father, we just want to thank you right now for Christian fellowship and for your presence, Lord God, that is evidently in this place. By faith, we believe that every crevice of this building is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, God, at this time as we're about to worship you with this, our offering. Won't you bless it? Sanctify it, O oh God. We know that you love a cheerful giver and we pray tonight, O oh God, that everyone 
one that's here will come and give cheerfully. Bless this offering. Make it a blessing to this ministry. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Take your seats for one minute. Amen. Hear this. Uh, a young couple just got married for like three, four, five years. So uh, purchased a house and they had one room for themselves and next door um, they had their son's room. One night they heard their son choking and coughing and, and making noise. So uh, apparently he had a quarter in his hand. He put it in his mouth and it lodged right here. It wouldn't come up and it wouldn't go down. So mommy heard him choking, went in, the boy pointed oh yes so mommy took the lad knocked him on the back pow 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 nothing would come out threw him upside down caught him nothing would come out father came next door and saw what was going on and the mother said it seems as if Johnny has swallowed something and it lodged right here and I believe that it's a quarter so the father now heard it was a quarter stepped on the boy my god body slammed him but the money still lodged here threw him in the ear punched him the money still lodged here all of a sudden the young man got a revelation and said i know what to do let's take him to pastor pastor can get money out of anybody <laughs> now when i was a pastor i could get money out of anybody but now that i'm a bishop it's a little different but I'm going to ask you to work with me tonight. It's offering time. Can you shake your neighbor's hands and tell your neighbor it's offering time? Okay, now hear me. We want to be a blessing to this ministry. So I'm going to ask everyone that can do what I do tonight. Do what I do. I'm going to ask everyone that can write a check for $50. Come on. To this ministry. $50 to this ministry. Let's do so in the name of Jesus. All right? Amen. Come on. The best bill that you have, amen, let's give it to rescue the perishing. This is a great man of God. When he comes, uh, amen, to our church, what we do, he does the same thing. So I'm going to ask you to be a blessing to him tonight. Those of you, thank you very much. Amen. Do we have any more 50s? Come on, church. Any more 50s? Any more 50s in the house before, amen, we go down all the way to 20? Come on. Thank you very much. Any more 50s in the house? Any more 50s in the house? They're coming, they're coming. Thank you very much. God bless you. Any more 50s in the house? That's only five. Can we get two more 50s? Two more 50s in the house. Two more 50s in the house. I'm going to ask you, just slap somebody in the back. Maybe that 50 will fly out of their mouth. Do we have any more 50s in the house? Thank God, uh, another 50. Come on, at least, uh, at least two more 50s. Come on, at least two more 50s. Still slapping, but God, this... Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right. Any more 50s? Any more 50s? Any more 50s? Any more 50s? Thank you very much. God bless you. Come on, church. At least two more 50s. You know I can't count. I've been saying two for a long time, right? At least two more 50s. Come on. Just two more 50s. Two more 50s. Two more 50s. Two more 50s. Any more 50s? All right. 50s going five, four, three, two, 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 two. Two. One. All right. Let's jump down now. Those of you who don't have 50, I'm going to ask those of you with a, a 25 or a 20, come right now. Come on. Come with a 25 or a 20. Just come and deposit it right now. Come on. Come on, saints. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's be a blessing to this great ministry. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. 20s, 20s, 25s and 20s. Come, come, come. 25s and 20s. Come, 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 come. Amen. Look at the little children bringing their checks. Oh, bless them. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. I'm going to take them home. Any, any kid with money, I want to take them home. I want to take them home. Keep the parents, but I'll keep the kids. All right. All the 20s, come along. Come along, 20s. Come along. Come along, come along, come along. Twenties, twenties, come, come, come. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. 
God bless you. God bless you. All right, 25. Thank you. God bless you. Come along. Come along. All the 20s, come along. 20s and 25s, come. Come, come. We're counting down 10, 9, 8, 7, 20s and 7. I can't, I can't leave 7. Come, come, come. 20s, thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your 25. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Come, come. I believe that. God bless you. Thank you, man. Thank you, man of God. Any more 20s? Any more 25s? Come, 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 come. 20s and 25s. Come, 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 come. Thank you, Bishop McKenzie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any more 20s and 25s? Okay. All right. We're coming down. Okay. Come on. Those of you with a 15 or a 10, come with your 15s and your 10s. Come on. I want to see everybody moving with a 15 or a 10. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. 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 All right, fifteens and tens, come, come, come. God bless you. 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 Those the tens. Those are the tens and the fifteens. Okay, those the tens. Now, if you're sitting beside a little child, amen, just turn them upside down because sometimes their mothers and their fathers give them money. Shake them and see if anything comes out. That's right. Check them out. Check them out. Some of you need to go downstairs to the bathroom and um, go find where that money is in those secret parts and bring them. We'll take them. We'll take them. Amen. God bless you. Okay, those the 15s and the 10s. All right, we're going to ask you right now, those of you with 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, food stamps, whatever you have, we'll take it. If you have gold teeth, and, the, and yes, as long as you know it's real gold, we'll take that too. We'll take rings and anything special. That's right. Necklaces that are solid gold, we'll take them too. Amen. Give us a chorus there as they're coming with their offering, would you? Go ahead, go. In the middle of the night, when my back against the wall, come with your offering, everything you have. Come on. Jesus taught me how to pray. In the middle, in the middle of, of the night, in the middle of the night. Jesus taught me how to pray in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, when my back, when my back against the wall, standing to feel about it. Jesus taught me how to pray in the middle of the night. 
Well, this preacher stand up. Reverend Dr. Mackenzie came in very late. I want to bring your word. Greetings. And I put on the preacher. Amen. Greet us, beloved. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say convention. convention. Well, it's great to be here tonight to celebrate with you in your convention. God is good. And I believe that the presence of the Lord is in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's getting ready to do great things tonight. Amen. I bring you greetings from Rock of Holiness Deliverance Ministry. 2096 Nastron Avenue. Amen. We give God the praise and the glory for rescue the perishing tonight. And this is your fifth, fifth convention. Praise God. And God is doing great things in this part of Brooklyn. Amen. And we just thank God for, amen, this church and this ministry. God bless you. Amen. amen. God bless you. Trust and hope that our hearts will be blessed tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Rev. Amen. Everybody sing with me, please. Amen. The preacher is coming. In the middle of the night, when my back against the wall, Jesus taught me how to pray in the middle of the night. Come on, get some more wind. In the middle of the night, get something on Jesus, Jesus taught me how to pray. The future is coming in the middle of the night. How many see that upward than last night? But this man is anointed. He is appointed. The anointed of the Lord is upon him. People of God, receive God's servant from deeper life, Reverend Dr. Bishop Claude Anthony Hebert in Jesus' name. Amen. Could we put our hands together and just bless the Lord tonight? Amen. Before you take your seats, just reach across and just meet your neighbor in the love of the Lord. Amen. There is so much of God's presence in the house tonight. Amen. Just love on your neighbor and then take your seats. God is a good God. Come on, I said God is a good God. I said God is a good God. Amen. It's good to be in the house again tonight. 
Amen. Last night we had a wonderful time. Amen. Amen. And, and church is just such a wonderful place. Amen. And sorry for those who aren't saved yet and still holding out. And I'm sorry for those who are saved and is not enjoying themselves in the Lord. Amen. But church is wonderful. The Spirit of God is amazing. The Word of God is exciting. Amen. And we can just rejoice in the goodness of God. I know that we are yet in time and not yet in eternity. And we go to work tomorrow. So we seek to hasten on. Amen. And we look at the Word of God in a moment's time. But allow me to attend to protocol. We want to honor, amen, the priest of this house tonight, Reverend Dr. D.C. Chambers and his darling wife, Minister Yvonne Chambers. Come on, put your hands together for them. Amen. To Bishop Scott and all the, the ministers, my colleagues on the platform and those in the congregation, I greet you tonight in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. To Reverend Dr. Sonia Hibbert. Amen. Uh, my wife and partner for the last 25 years, I give God thanks for her. Amen. She should not be here tonight, but last night was so crazy that she overturned her, her schedule and just wanted to be in the house of God. So when we leave here, she'll have to play catch up with other things uh, to be ready for work tomorrow again. But it's good to have her in the house and then, amen. Uh, it's your number of faces that weren't here last night, so at least Deaconess Natty and Exhorter Pusey got their job done. I gave them an assignment. So I'm just going to ask all those from Deep Alive to stand. You're in the house tonight. Amen. God bless you. Told them in Queens Sunday night that I have the best congregation in, in America. Amen. And you have to honor people that follows you even when they don't know where they're going. You just announce that you're going someplace and sometimes none of us know where we're going. Amen. Thank God for navigation. Yes, amen. amen. But we arrive nevertheless. Amen. And I'm grateful. Thank you so much tonight for being here. Amen. And to support this wonderful man of God. We go away back. Sometimes you tell people how long you have known someone. Uh, they begin to calculate your age. But what we go about about twenty five years or more. Yeah, ninety ninety four, twenty twenty one years. Amen. That's a long time. Amen. But we're thankful to God. Amen. Thankful to God for what He's doing. I, I turn with me tonight to Exodus chapter fourteen. Last night, Lord would have us to deliberate on and talk about the value of a godly leader. Yes. Amen. And I promised those of you last night that we will try to look at the designated text tonight and we'll see where God will take us. Amen. Exodus chapter 14. The key verse is verse 3, but I want to be reading uh, the latter part of Exodus chapter 14 to give us somewhat of an uh, insight or foresight into some of the things that God would have us to address tonight. Exodus chapter 14, if you've got it, say amen. 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 Verse 3 said, uh, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness had shut them in. And we slip down to verse 13, and it said, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. 
for the Egyptians who may have seen today, he shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Uh, but lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea, and I. Behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came uh, not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and uh, made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them to their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that the morning watch, uh, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and on the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said let us flee amen from the face of Israel for the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them they remained not so much as one of them but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left thus the lord saved israel that day out of the hand of the egyptians and israel saw the egyptians dead upon the seashore and israel saw that great work which the lord did up on the egyptians and the people feared the lord and believe the Lord and his servant Moses. Father, bless your words to our hearts even now we pray. We look to you, O God, and we tell you thanks for everything. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. amen. Last night, quickly, amen, as we addressed, amen, uh, the text. And the liberating around verse 3 and the, and the Lord took us amen to emphasize the importance amen uh, of the the godly leader that is or he or she is irreplaceable amen and we address the whole value that is amen to be placed upon the man and the woman of God because God is honoring his word as he relates to us in that form that I promise you that I'll give you leaders, pastors, amen, bishops, 
Amen. That will represent me. There will be duplicates of me. So they will love you as I have loved you. They will feed you as I would feed you. They will care for you as I have cared for you. And we uh, explored some things and we looked at how, amen, sometimes or the uh, the enemy will come against us and God in his divine providence who have already promised us that he will take care of us amen and so forth and uh, we we examine though sometimes uh, foolish people amen uh, blinded by their own uh, covetousness and their own evils would seek to pursue the child of God. Amen. amen. Not understanding that those of us who walk, amen, in the protection of the Spirit of God and is obedient to the Word of God are virtually invincible and, and the enemy will set plots, amen, not knowing that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the hurt, beholding the evil and the good. Amen. And not understanding that there is no weapon that is is formed or targeted against us will ever prevail amen because we we dwell in the secret place of the most high and we abide under the shadow of the almighty amen we declare that he is our fortress he is our protection amen he is our guide he is our way maker amen and we come tonight and we want to be looking at the team again it may look impossible but God will make a way. Touch your neighbor and say, God will make a way. God will make a way. Doesn't matter what is happening in your life, God will make a way. Can I have a witness in the house tonight? Amen. Can I have someone who have gone through something and have proven that God, amen, has come through with a mighty hand of deliverance and have uh, brought you out, amen. The scripture says to us that God, amen, will carry us on eagle's wings and amen. Uh, after a while in walking with God, you begin to behave like Paul when he said, I glory in tribulations. I look forward to the challenge because I know that the God that I serve is going to bash the devil's head in. Amen. So I look forward for the challenge and I look forward for when the enemy comes at me because I know that God is up to something good. Amen. And I'm so privileged, amen, that God can set me at a place to allow the enemy to come at me. Amen. Because uh, understand this tonight that every fight that you're going to is already fixed. All right, no, yes. Amen. And understand this, that in a spiritual and pure and righteous sense, God's operate like the mafia. Amen. Fix the fight and better it and he can't lose. So if you get an inside run through the scriptures, you can better it because well, you can't lose. Cause the fight is fixed and the fight go any other way. Enough people dead. Amen. So the fight has to go accordingly. So when God position you in that way, you can see set everything on it because you can't lose God the fight is fixed amen we serve a God that is a strategician we serve a God that is a master of setting up ambush amen we we, we, we serve a God that is is more skillful than the Navy seal and amen and the infantry and you really take God from God will hit you for six amen isn't it amazing that that's the God that backs us amen I wonder why Christians get when God is such an awesome God. Amen. You talk about done, done, done. Amen. God is a done from every corner. Amen. You run things everywhere. Amen. And he is our defense. Is our defense? Is our defense? Uh, let us seek to explore the text in the in the time allowed us. To, and then I send you how to work, to whom to get ready for work. Uh, the text says it may look impossible, but God can make a way. Now, after Israel had suffered, uh, Amen, for generations, and God delivered them, they were now confronted by the greatest threat on their lives. They had gone through much things. Amen. While being in Egypt, a whole lot of injustice. And amen. But they had survived all that. Amen. Pharaoh had, amen, had, had put them on the 
pressure but because God was in their side they came through all of that but this was the greatest threat yet amen on their lives and, uh, and when you read in the text amen they begin to behave as normal human beings would behave and, uh, and that is why we resort again tonight to emphasize the fact that you need to have a man or woman of God in the midst of you because when things look hopeless amen the man or the woman of God that is hearing from God will declare to you like Moses said to he to the Israel stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord watch this look how God can work this out amen because they have an inside track I told you last night that there are some prayers that you can get through but there are some deliverance that you need help amen because there are different levels of the anointing and you've got to respect anointed leadership I understand that God for all of us but not all of us can attain to certain places and that is why we have different levels of authority amen and the man and the woman of God is a CEO amen they stand stand or sit at the pinnacle amen they are like the pilot and as important as the flight attendants are there are things that they don't see they are in the cabin so the pilot views everything and sometimes he doesn't tell them everything amen because he doesn't want to spark a panic and sometimes the pastor sees some things and he can't tell you because you can't handle it but because he's God's man or he's God's woman he sees or she sees things that they have to hold it and you don't understand amen sometimes we come up in the church and we look strange and we're behaving strange and because we have seen some strange things amen and we just got to ponder it our heart like when Mimi amen was impregnated she had to ponder some things because her pregnancy was not natural so she could not even speak it sometimes God tells us some things and we've got to just come and we've got to just hold it I told you last night that there is something that you can't even say to your spouse it's too weighty you've just got to bear up under the weight of it but the God that has called you and anointed you will sustain you through any crisis amen and I've got to wait another upon the time amen he told the back of you said study the vision understand it resonate in it let it saturate in your heart before you will express it because if you don't understand the vision clearly when you express it it might not come over with a certain amount of conviction but when God speaks to you amen you've got to let it resonate and you've got to think on it and then when you deliver it you deliver it with conviction can I have a witness up in the house tonight So Israel was undergoing their greatest crisis. The working conditions in Egypt were unbearable, but this new assault was about, amen, at their extinction. Their lives were now being severely threatened. Total termination was the objective. Amen. Pharaoh and his mighty army, amen, had one agenda. Amen, that we are going to terminate. Amen. The Israelites once and for all. And when they look, amen, ahead of them amen they saw the great red sea and knew that they could not pass through that most of them would have drowned even though they could swim amen so naturally speaking because they had not gotten a revelation they begin to quarrel and complain and back again that's why leaders have to be strong because sometimes loving congregation will turn on you in their ignorance because they tried it with David when David amen had gone to war and they had lost their family and Zilgah captured his very henchmen picked up stone and perceived that we we're gonna stone him to death ah, but he knew God he knew God and he understood people and he sought God and God gave him a word and I thank God tonight amen that in the midst of all of that he was strong and he believed God and that's why leaders have got to be strong you've got to square up your shoulders even when you're going through hell or high water you've got to stand in this pulpit and preach lies and preach faith the God that we serve will have you preach faith and your house is on foreclosure the 
the creditors calling for your motor vehicle. You're almost bankrupt, but God give you a word to appreciate because you just shall live by faith. And you can't tell the congregation the real essence of what you're going through, but you've got to preach life and preach faith. Israel was now facing a reality. Yes, sir, yes. Facing a reality. Now they begin to quarrel. Mm. It would have been better you left us in Egypt yeah. That's all right. That's all right. than to have taken us into the wilderness yeah. to allow Pharaoh to kill us out here. At least in Egypt we might have gotten some good graves. Now we are just going to be left, amen, to, to the bees, to devour our flesh. Amen. And they begin to murmur and complain. Amen. But God would never deliver you to allow your enemies to terminate you. So even when you don't have an answer, amen, believe that God has delivered me and I ain't gonna die. The devil can't kill me because the God that has called me and has saved me. And even if God God, as the Hebrew boy said, the evening God, don't deliver me. I'm not going power. I'm going to praise Him, nevertheless. Amen. Not gonna quit. Gonna quit. You see, God is not only a provider, but He's also our protector. He's our way maker. He's our sustainer and he's our inspirator. If you're still long in the presence of God, God will talk to you. Amen. Now just when things seem hopeless sometimes, that's when God turns up. And I really believe in my own assessment that I think that God has a sense of humor. Really think that God has a sense of humor. Because God will allow you to just boast right now about faith. Yeah. And then just let all hell break loose. Yeah. And then they just sit up in the heavens there. And say watch them. Yeah. That's right. And they are having a good laugh. Yeah. Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Michael and Gabriel. Yeah. Amen. When crisis. Amen. Really hits us. And before we hit rock bottom. He will just touch an angel and just say go deliver. Yeah. Amen. Because after he had anointed Elijah, amen, and sent him up on Mount Carmel, and Elijah went about a giant and saw God move great and mighty. Here comes Jezebel and issued a threat. And the mighty man of God left from the mountain and goes down in the valley. And God sat up in the heavens and they had a good fun. And then they summons an angel and said, Go tell the prophet, the man of God, to get up because you're working to finish yet. Uh, isn't it amazing? And I know I've got witnesses in here uh, that God will move you into a glory aspect and then the shift you and put you back in darkness. Uh, and God will bring you up uh, and just immediately just pull you down uh, to see how you're going to react. Uh, and if you can't handle folly, then you don't deserve to be on the mountain top. Uh, you must be able to move from mountain top uh, and still know that God uh, is a God in the valley. In these last days, all situational Christians going dead. Who can only worship God when the situation is going well? Amen. Trust me, no apology. You now survive. But dead in the run. You have to learn to trust God. That when there is nothing you're gonna say like his life, I perish, I perish. But, but I know I'm going to quit. I'm gonna stay in this fight. So if I die, I'm dying fighting. And some of you will have to be like Shama and say, This is mine. The Bible says Shama stood up. Amen. On the, on, on, on the past of Lana said, This is mine. And he defended it. And 400 men were slain. You have got to be territorial. Amen. And aggressive and vigilant. You have to protect your salvation. Amen. The vision. Because the devil will snatch it from you. You have got to know who you are in God. And defend it. Hey. Understand this, my brothers and sisters. That the walk with God 
is filled with drama and excitement. Amen. Oh yeah. That's right. Walk with God filled with drama and excitement. And what happens from time to time is that the enemy will just come from some angles. Yes. And in order, in order for you truly to demonstrate, like Abraham did, that Amen was willing to slay his son, the Bible said that when, when God took him to the ultimate test, then the angel of the Lord said, Now I know that you truly fear God. Might I say to you, Amen, that if you are not there yet, it's coming. And I'm not trying to frighten you. Don't quit. God of God. And God will defend you. But you're going to experience moments that things hit you where you never see coming. You're going to have people that last week, Sunday, they would have given you their pocketbook and their shoes. This week, Friday, they cuss you out. The weather is more predictable than people. Yeah. As much as the weather men them miss all the time, yeah. they're more predictable than people. Sure. Because one moment they praise you and the next moment they switch. Yeah. Right. Come on, somebody. So you have to know God for yourself. Yeah. And those who are called have got to know so you call. Yeah. Exactly and you have to understand so the man call you. Yeah. Because if you don't get that right, that is God call you. Yeah. I'm a healer. A God call you. Yeah. And you listen. You say, "Speak, Lord, thy servant hear it." Yeah. Too many people have been called by men. And what has happened? What has happened is that just as how Samuel was serving in the temple and didn't even know the voice of God a whole other people serving in church yeah. the, God has purpose for them you know yeah. but a whole other them serving but I've never really heard from God yet oh but there's purpose for their lives and that is why we can't keep amen we can't stop emphasizing the importance of men and women of God amen because even though Eli was on his way out, he still knew God's voice. He said, I didn't call you, but I understand this thing. Amen. That God is speaking to you. So when you hear the voice again, it's not Eli. Amen. It's God talking to you. So let's just speak, Lord, thy servant, hear it. But watch this. Some of us are worse than Eli. Because you, we will not tell them yeah. to say, Speak, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Not tell them. Yeah. That is why you have got to be certain that you are led by a man or a woman of God. Yeah. Because if you hear about and it is being led by a religious, insecure <laughs> leader, when God is calling for you. Yeah. And because God respects authority, He will speak to them to speak to you. You'll not get the word. Hey. So, but when you have someone who is spiritual, when you have someone who has his own connection with God, insecurity is not found within because he understands that we are just servants of God. Amen. And if God is speaking through me to speak to you, I will speak thus, said God. And I'm not insecure because understand this those who we mentor must surpass us because they got all of us and all of them. So they should be better than us. So you can't be insecure. <laughs> You can't mentor someone and turn around and then get jealous. I mentored you because I am positioning myself because there's coming a time that I am going to transfer the mantle. Amen. There's coming a time that God is going to have me to release you into ministry. The problem is that there are 
are too many glory hunters. And when your time is up, on the 30th was my birthday. And someone said to me, say, well then, uh, Bishop, you're going to be here a long time. I said, oh yes. I'm not going anywhere soon. And she, the member said, even when you're going like this, I said, oh no, sister, the devil is a liar. When I'm going like this, I am sitting up in a nice chair and somebody pastoring. I am oversighting and I'm saying, go girl, go boy. Yeah, those who I am mentored. And I walk with the walking sick, preaching the gospel, the devil is a liar. I would have feared, if after all of my success, there no success, I would have feared somebody must take the button. Young men, young women, I call you because you're strong. But some of us love the glory. But God help you. Because if you won't move out of the way and take it like he lie. Here the lamp of God went out. We've got the transition. Let me hear snow. The most important time to stick with God is when you are under attack. When you're under attack. Amen. And and and, and Esther said, if I perish, I perish. But I must see the king. The Hebrew boys declared that even if God don't deliver, we ain't gonna quit because quitting is not an option. Paul said, For me to live is Christ and to die is great gain. When you know whom you believe, you will be fully persuaded that God is able, that God is capable, and that God is available to deliver you from whatever the enemy launches at you. Israel was trapped between two great evils. The Red Sea, amen, was uncrossed, but it wasn't a threat. Understand this, that the Red Sea wasn't a threat, but Pharaoh and his army was a threat. You've got to check your enemies, and the church fight against itself sometimes, and left the devil around rampant in the church. You've got to know what is a threat. The Red Sea wasn't a threat. It was uncrossed, but it wasn't a threat, but Pharaoh was a threat, and sometimes we fight against brethren out of jealousy and we allow the devil to run rampant in the church but the devil is a liar touch your neighbor and say check it check it check it check it see who's a threat check out who's a threat so fear were coming fear were coming amen and, and, and trust me in these last days uh, the fear that comes up in the church not riding up in the chariot the fear that is coming a travel up in a homer and bima lexus and escalade pocketbook weighty them get tides that can pay the entire lease we are here but come with strings attached. Yes, sir. But we have to be bold like the apostles. Yes, yes. And say, man, woman, you are your money, perish. Yes. This is the work of God. Yes. And whether you tithe or the offering, yes or no, the work will come on. Because you can buy this. You can buy a position. You know how many people are in church? A minister and deacon and elder and apostle and abide and buy it. Purchase it. Oh yes. Purchase it. Because what? They can make heavy donations. Heavy donations. Don't know Jesus, but them always have a conviction. Pastor, the Lord spoke to me. The devil is a liar. Buy you, buy you with. The Lord not talk to you. And God knows you they even save. He knows your heart. The Lord spoke to me to make a donation. And understand this, we are all a human, no matter how the anointing. And sometimes some people get so big that God have to turn up strong yeah. and say, now nah, happening here. Amen. Because the human side of you, my brother, would want to give them a free pass, you know. Because they're so generous. Every month they come, they say, the Lord spoke to me half a dozen shirts. 
Yeah, you just suit we around somebody your suit. There's a human side to all of us. And when you're supposed to put on your foot, uh, conscience I tell you, but they have been good to you. And the Lord said, Who you are gonna believe? Who you are gonna believe? You're gonna believe fear or you're gonna believe me. So let's not behave as pastors like it's not a challenge. It's a challenge. If in the mind shot, they say, No, the Lord spoke to me, Rev. And I saw, I saw, I, I'm gonna carry you someplace and then drive you up and pull you up down a plaza on the mall and say, Choose what you want. Take the devil a play. You say, My God, hallelujah. On a God at all, the devil a corner your full center because he have, he have a full knowledge of what God planned to do with rest of the perishing. So he want to ambush it before he want to sabotage what God has to do. But when God's purpose is in place, what everything else comes secondary. <laughs> Everything else comes secondary. And when, when, when a man has please God, God just open doors and just begin to bless you. But we have to be careful and identify what is threat. The Red Sea is not a threat, but zero is a threat. Fear is a threat. And fear is a Riding up in the church in all the royal apparel. Some of the fear has been around church for years. So the night I told them in City Mission, Amen. And I said to them that, that, that uh, we have come to a place, Amen, where you have unsaved people who are theologically sound. Oh, yes. A very good, very good academic skills and they are doctorate in various aspects of theology the master hermeneutics and eschatologies and, and, and so forth and amen they are good public speakers amen and the devil position them in the church and make them prosperous amen and that's why John warned us he said believe us don't believe every spirit in them, but try the spirit try the spirit and that's why the devil want to shut down Holy Ghost because when you're not in a spirit you can't try and they take nothing but we plead the blood of Jesus Christ and we release the Holy Ghost up in the church because he's the detector sometimes you don't get it clear but God does have you just a groan he has not a clear revelation but he has you groaning in the spirit and I thank God for churches who still believe in praying mothers that you will have intercessors in the church of the living God that when sin come in if it pass you are pass we can't pass the intercessors. And this is last days. And this is just not last day talk. This is last days. We're going to heaven. Holy Ghost, stop preach and heaven, stop preach. Now we are preaching prosperity. Everybody wants it. Yeah. The only thing I want is that which can take me to heaven. Because the jet is going to come up short. Jet can't even reach moon. Jet limited. I want something that when the trump of God is sound, my God, the engine take off and I'm caught up. I'm caught up. I've gone places where jet can't follow me. When the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up. Shall be caught up. Shall be caught up. God help the jetters. Because I am planning to go someplace where jets are not invited. And some people will have jets and helicopters and everything, but yet still miss. 
the final shout. Moses, amen, amen, uh, God's man and God's leader, amen. The last night, amen, uh, before they were delivered, God would speak to him and he declared and Amen. Spoke to the people of Israel and told them what to do. And amen. Because watch this. We 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 preach God as a merciful, loving, kind God, and that's that's a good side of God. But just in case nobody never tell you, God is a killer. Do you know? God has some he angels. Them are assassin. Them better than the Navy SEAL. They take you out in a flash. And they pass through Egypt. Pass through Egypt. And they said, leave a mark on your doorpost. Put something that signify. Amen. Because we're passing through soon. And the Bible said the death angel passed through. Passed through. And wipe out all the firstborn. Yes. Oh, Lord. And said, the scripture said that Pharaoh mourned for a little while. But trust me, wicked people not change for long, you know. Sure. No, no, no. Come on. Right. That's why the Bible says, Can a man take fire, put nine bosom? Yes. Wicked people not change. No change so I will see them a ball of that crocodile. Yes. Set them a set you up and devour you. So don't even wash them the type of tears. And wicked Pharaoh cry and weep. I said to Moses, take all of them. And as I said to you last night, God of a sense of humor. I don't know how people migrating and gone gone borrow things. Imagine me a migrate. I mean not coming back. I mean says, Scott, lend me all some money. You're not going to see me again. And God tell them, say, God tell them say, to lend you. And the fool. When God wants to mess you up, you know, as intelligent as you are, God let you become temporary lunatic for a while and let the church have its way. Have you ever been blessed by people who don't like you? God speak to them and they bless you. And when they bless you, they go home, then cuss and quarrel and wonder what they did. That's the God that you serve. But what they don't bless you already, they can't come back, come ask you for it. So they see you on the next moment. They bless you this morning, you know, and this evening, them pastor cut them high. But that's the type of God that you serve. And you've got to understand the uniqueness of the God that you serve. Amen. That he, 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 he is so unique and he's so, amen, strategic that God takes you from many different hungers and just bless you. Just bless you. Moses quieted the fearful crowd and said to them, Stand still, stand still, stand still, stop your knives, stop your knives and stop the crying, hold it, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord that He's going to show you today, not tomorrow, not next month, but today. So He turned to them and He says, It is the Egyptian that you see because God when God is about to kill your enemy you know, he might allow you to see them so you see all of them enemies that you have on a sleeper cell before God kill them he's going to show you them oh, yeah. so when they're dead you know I've got them funeral because you know exactly that is the judgment of God take them so you're not even bother God here he show you before he take them out so he said to them Israel, he said, look, you see the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them no more, forever. You have to listen to prophetic utterance. You know? I don't know how much of these Israelites took that prophetic word. That not only are you not going to see them, you're not going to see them forever. Because God is about to kill them. So he said, take a last look. Remember their faces. Because this is the last time you're going to see them. You will not see that enemy again. Watch this. He said the Lord shall fight for you. And all you're going to do is just hold your peace. 
because this battle is not yours now in the face of an impending atrocity Moses was immensely calm this is this is where anointed leadership comes in you have calamity but you're calm you are secure you're settled that's what you need in a godly leader that when crisis hit the church is calm you one thing is the pastor because mark you remember the man or the woman of God is that duplicate of the Lord Amen. and likewise when the disciples were in the ship and they begin to panic yeah. and the ship taking in water and they run down says uh, master care us not that we perish yeah. and Jesus is having a rest yeah. a yeah. chill yes. yeah. and sometimes church would want you to begin to panic yeah and called special fasting desperate yeah. fasting where everybody are afraid somebody don't have no feet yes. panic yeah. oh no we're not adding to your panic we're not fast Amen. not called no fast we just don't believe God yes. just be still and watch God work Amen. so pastor uh, the, the scripture says uh, that certain things going not out by, by fasting and, and prayer not this time because all the university are panic. This is this is hunger strike when going on. This is no fasting. And the pastor has to be calm. No fasting. We're going to believe God. There's a time for everything. Oh yes, a time for everything. And you have got to be sensitive to see where people are. Because sometimes they, they, they're hollering for past, fasting and prayer and so on. And they're in a state of panic. It's not going to work. Amen. Double-minded man is unstable. Amen. And the scripture has to fulfill itself. We are still wasting time. Quiet the congregation. And a calm Moses. A quiet, quiet, quiet. God is in control. Don't worry. Don't worry. We got this going. We got this going. They will never foreclose on the property. Don't panic. This is the house of God. This is the church of the living God. We're not going to panic. We're just going to believe God. God bless us with this property. And the devil can't get it uh, amen and you've got to just be, 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 be calm in the midst of a trying time Moses was calm he didn't have the details of how God would deliver them but he knew that God amen uh, that rain down plagues after plagues in Egypt culminating in the killing of the firstborn would deliver them from the wrath of the Egyptians he knew that God would not take him out of Egypt after he had sent him into Egypt to deliver Israel to allow Pharaoh to kill them in the wilderness if he could kill them in Egypt right in his backyard then he's in the wilderness he's to kill them the devil is a liar Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God took you out of a much nightclub shootings accidents the devil couldn't kill you there's now that you're saved sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost the devil going to kill you the devil is a liar rise up and said I shall not die but I shall live to declare the works of the Lord and let the devil hear me talk it and talk it positively say I shall not die devil you can't take me out let him understand that I'm not fearful because for me to live is Christ, devil, and to die is great gain. The instructions came after. Amen. To stretch out the rod over the Red Sea, and it will be divided, and Israel will cross over dry land. But he purposed to harden Pharaoh's heart, so that he will pursue Israel at their demise. I paused long enough to tell you that you watch them people that is after you. Amen. You watch them people that is pursuing you. God might have just harden them out because amen he wants to work a notable miracle in your life understand that if God is the same yesterday today and forever he still works today as he has worked in the past touch your neighbor and say don't worry don't worry God's got you covered God's got you covered God's got you covered Watch this, you need to stop your complaining, man. When you are being persecuted, just give God thanks. Paul said in everything, give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's right. Watch this. Sometimes God wants to promote you. And let them treat you like how they treat the Jephthah. Because sometimes they don't show you out like the baby with the bath water, you know. 
you're stuck someplace. Yeah. So sometimes you have to get evicted. Yeah. That you grow up. Yeah. And know say God or God. Because yeah. some of us, some of us trust God through organizations. Because yeah. the organization have a certain level of security. Yeah. And God said, I need you to trust me. Yeah. You are to inch an organization. And you're saying that you know what I'm staying here, sir. Mm. Oh yes. One bird in the hand is surer than the hundred that is in the bushes. I don't know if I'll catch anything. Not when you're dealing with God. When you're dealing with God, you have to let go the one bird yes. and go for um, those in the bushes. Yes. And God will evict you that you might grow up. Amen. He send them up into the upper room. And everybody up inside here yeah. have church all by themselves and the world will perish. And God said, play or not play. I think all the ghosts is with something or not compete. And you talking in tongues and you discerning. And you laying hands. And amen. You just enjoy the gift. That don't work inside. The gifts are for outside. That you might bring deliverance outside. And God raise up a herod. That the church would be scattered all over. Amen. And even in today's time, God's still doing the same thing. Scatter some people. Spread them, scatter them, scatter them, scatter them, scatter them all over. That the gospel will be preached. And because God wants us not to complain in the midst of our persecution. Amen. Uh, because who knows if God has not hardened the heart of your persecutors that they might bring the best out of you. If you're not provoked, you will not know what discipline is. If people don't lie on you, you'll not know how to hold your peace and let the Lord fight his battle. Amen. So God has to allow you to be persecuted because many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God said, I'm going to deliver you out of them all. Why won't the church just trust God and shut up and stop complaining in everything? Give thanks. Amen. Understand this that devil not pursue. Amen. That which he already have. So if the devil is pursuing you. It is obvious that you are a child of God and you belong to God. Amen. Uh, uh, watch it. Bounty on to know where time amen and, and go after innocent people they go after criminals and in our in in the eyes of the devil we are criminals and he's after us but god is your protector and paul said just give god thanks when you are being persecuted amen. let me hear Lord. he said we should leave all vengeance to him he will repay oh, yes he's teaching you to love the unlovable and to love your enemies and to love those who despitefully use you and abuse you is teaching you amen how to develop in love uh, Pharaoh was charging to his debt but he didn't have a clue yeah. oh my god sometimes god is going to is going to wipe out uh, amen you your accusers and your persecutors uh, amen and the, the poor soul don't have a clue amen i told you last night that god will set you up like a bait Oh yeah. And have you dangling before Satan yeah. and him opening him out. Hell have a largest mouth. Yeah. And God have your right over hell. And hell have opened it mouth and God does a back it up. Yeah. Back it up. And the enemy will pursue you. Yeah. And don't know that God is leading them into a trap. Yeah. Because he's a master of bushment. Yeah. I told you last night that he sent Joseph at, Amen. Out into the valley of Tekoa and have them go worship. And the enemy stand up and say, But what is this? Amen. Because worship confused. Amen. He that's in a worship confused. Con people they don't understand the dynamics of true worship so they get mixed up and when the presence of God descend they begin to lose them equilibrium amen and worship is something that amazes amen oh it just it just it just it just dominates an environment have you ever been in an environment where you see true worship is being exhumed and know all secular powers and carnal powers just come under subjection you don't want to lay hands you not to rebuke you just invoke the place with worship and everything carnal and negative comes under subjection if you want to subdue demons and devil just get into an attitude and worship and when you begin to worship demons and devils come under subjection let me hear not 
when God is in control of your life although hell enlarged at his mouth you shall not be devoured famine in the land but you shall not lack uh, there was famine in Samaria but God used four leprous men to chase away the Syrian army and leave all their stuff don't tell me that God is not a master of strategies he let four, the feet of four leprous men sound like a mighty army and they run out of town uh, God and the word of the man of God that said tomorrow at this time there shall be food in Samaria you can't watch your circumstances you can't watch your present situation because in a moment's time God can turn you from obscurity and bring you to the height of popularity that's the God that we serve can't watch your present state watch your present state you have got to just learn to flow Amen. with God Amen. flow with God Israel had no food nor water in the wilderness but God sweetened the bitter waters of Mara and opened the windows of heaven and provided for them quills and manna that's the God that we serve Amen. if you have rivers that seem it and cross it and mountains you can turn it through God specializes in the things that are impossible and he said I want to do for you and for you and for you the things that no other power can do can someone just say amen so when your enemies are pursuing you hold your peace man for God has a plan amen the God that you serve amen is a master amen of deliverance amen amen and when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the living God is going to lift up a standard against him allow God to fight his fight the fight is not your fight the fight is sick just be a spectator be a worshiper in the midst of the fight and watch God work Watch God work. In verse 20, I'm hasting to close. But in verse 20 of the text that we read, Amen. What was light to Israel was darkness to the Egyptian. Pillar of cloud and the fire. And yet still, it is darkness to the Egyptian. And it is light to the Israelites my God the same thing that God will use to bless you is the same thing he'll use to kill your enemy alright watch this let's go to agricultural science water is essential and especially rain water but the same rain water that beats down some plant and kill it half an hour after some of the plant does shoot up and become giant. The same blessing that falls and kill hypocrites is the same blessing that falls and rises up the children of God. Same thing. The same blessings that cause us to bud blossoms and then position to be a fruit. The same waters flood out some things yeah. destroy them yeah. destroy them so watch this while you're in the presence of God just make full use of it for in his presence there is fullness of joy and that is right and there are pleasures for evermore I told you last night that when you come church, you have to be strategically placed enough. Yeah. Okay. Because watch this. Even in videoing, sometimes you have to be careful because you have dead spot. True. That's true. That's true. Even in the church, sometimes you have some dead spot. Yeah. Yes, oh yeah, some dead spot. Yeah. And you find yourself like the Dead Sea. You can't even move. Yeah. Dead water. Yeah. And sometimes you just have to just echo up a praise. Yeah. Oh yes and just get in the spirit and just dance away out of the dead sea and find yourself another corner and even if you have to stand up and worship for the entire service find a place, find a amen corner where the showers of blessings are falling I have seen 
I have seen in times past, more than one time, I have had the privilege of standing up here. Rain falling there, and I am standing up right here. And no rain falling here. The same way all rain stop at some place, that same way a blessing. The blessing of fall right here, so. And somebody the right here, so all the bumps, you know, and now I feel nothing. Hear them now. I wouldn't want even can be nicer because the presence of the Lord is upon you. But nothing. Stand up right beside her and be dry like peace. And show us a blessing of fall here, sir. You think God make me see it? God can bless you right here, sir. And the blessing stop right here, sir. Not moving another hoof because over the next side is not deserving. So God said, I can touch down and just bless you. And people wondering how the brother does a shout and I carry on because the Lord is blessing me. I don't know about you, but I'm in a blessing corner right now. And the presence of the Lord is just blessing me. Let me hasten to stop. Let me hasten to stop. And that is why that is why when you get a breakthrough amen church can't be too programized you know because sometimes uh, sometimes it's only sunday you see me but monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday my sister a hard help me got you you know now me come church sunday morning and you want to praise break for run the highest Mark you, sometimes you run, sometimes you run, you now feel nothing. Because you never feel it, you have experienced it. How good God has been, you just want to run. So what happened? Is that them saying that you have to feel it? Oh no, honey. I have experienced it from Monday to, to Saturday. Oh God has been good. I just need the eyes to run up and down and just give God praise. Why the Pentecostal church? Amen. Is in serious remission. Is that we're waiting for feel good people. Yeah, yeah. But God is worthy to be praised whether you are feel something, yes or no. God is God whether you have a feeling, yes or no. And God is a good God whether you're feeling something, yes or no. He is worthy to be praised. And we sit down waiting. And God said, let me see if you're not going to praise me today. Because if I have to touch you, forget the praise. After all I have done for you, you're not getting a touch today. So you're going to sit down all through the service and you don't get no touch. Sit down and wait and touch. I'm not waiting for no touch. God is a good God. And I'm going to get up and give him a praise. Because he deserves to be praised. He deserves to be glorified. He deserves to be magnified. We're waiting and waiting. Yes. But roll back the curtains from Monday when your bad supervisor come against you. And it was the goodness of God why you not cause all bad word. Choose to come, you have co workers arrive you like rolling cars. But God's grace has kept you Wednesday. They won't fire you, but they couldn't fire you because God put you here. Thursday, them tell life on you. Friday, something else. Saturday, you come home and you pity them down crazy. So when you come at church Sunday, you just want to worship God. You just want to praise him. You just want to magnify him. You can't be bothered in waiting to feel a feel. The feeling is wonderful. The, old, the overshadowing is exciting but even if I don't feel nothing God is a good God and I can praise him nevertheless God don't want to touch me for me to know that God is a good God God don't want to anoint me to let me know that God is a good God I'm going to praise him no matter what and what we have done what we have done is that the church now pack up a shoe horse My God. oh yeah show horse but the church is not a a game but a game show when you're going to see which one of these show horse is going to jump best 
And just as how we have to groom some people, yes. if they do a kindness, they say, Oh my God, my brother, we so appreciate you. Trust me, you see, if goodness must come out of you, we never tell you thanks. The devil is a liar. Everything you have to be saying thanks. And then the bishop has to take the mic publicly and call him and say, You know that the person did such and such. Oh no, oh no, the devil is a liar. You're a Christian. Good must come out of you. Why good must come out of you, Bishop? Because everywhere you turn, goodness and mercy will follow you. We have them like show horse. We have to groom them. And any of them sweep. And you didn't make reference that they came out and sweep sat there. God help you. But pastors, don't take this advice. Because what good for the goose is not good for the gander. But me not in that the junk or something there. We must walk the work of him that sent us. While it is day, me not in a show house business. We are Christian and we must work the works of Him. When you come to church, whatever your hands find to do, do it to the joy of the Lord. We have to pamper them, preacher. We have to pamper them and we have to caress them. We say, and any morning, them don't get no praise, you're not getting no worship out of them. So, so you have to constantly be pampering them groom them oh yes prepare them oh no the church must come to church and come to church with a praise and don't come to hear what we are aiming for is to hear bishops well done come on you know how many people getting public well done and god know that they are like Amaziah doing everything right in the sight of God but their heart not perfect and God said with that sacrifice I don't want it but because man look on the outward we see their good works and we are commending them publicly but God know that it is all for your show any morning you do I like them work done them resign they give up all of a sudden them get a vision the lord is speaking to them and then gone somewhere else where someone is going to publicly compliment them where we came from we preach and it's a blessing and then we hear them and go on like you arriving now publicly too and trust me you better have a smile like all this. You have a smile, up. or you get another rebuke till a smile comes on your face. Nowadays, you can't even you can't even correct people. Are they gone to a next church? Next place you turn up to share fellowship. You see them. Simple correction and they gone like kite. But watch this. I'm closing. But watch this. When you really have a relationship with God, come on. It's really not about people, you know. It's really not about people. It is about you and God. And you have a conviction that I'm going to work the work of Him that has called me and has positioned me in His house every one of us must come to church knowing that you belong yeah. and you are working to hear well done thou good and faithful servant come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the foundation of the herd but too many men pleases too many men pleases and that is why finally as Moses sent out the spies ten of them went Men, please listen. You know, ten of them when they look and they say, Oh my God, the land is flowing with milk and honey. But you watch them conjunction is brethren. Yeah. Oh, you watch them conjunction is brethren. They always have a but. Always have a but. The Bible said, Caleb and Joshua said, We are well able. Well able. The giant them is so big, Moses, we can't miss. Yeah. Yeah. Even if we can 
uh, throw a sling or throw a spear straight enough they're so big we can't miss yeah. if we miss their heads which is so large we can't miss their torso yeah. we have too much too much target to him at Amen. too much target to him at. but what happened is that the crowd of jokers influ Aye. influence influence the entire group and what happened is that 45 years after Caleb has to sit in no waiting for what God had promised him God had promised him hear me tonight it might seem impossible the giants might be in the land but if God tells you that that is yours it's yours if God said that is yours it's yours and all you have to do is go in and possess it. Amen. All you have to do is go in and possess it. Go in and possess it. Finally, what you're going through or confronting is not your main concern. But your main concern is will you believe God? Can God? Yes, God can. Will God? That depends on your faith. Can God? Yes, God can. Yes, will God? That depends on your faith. Whether God will give you the breakthrough that you need, it is dependent upon your faith. But God can. God can. God can furnish a table in a wilderness. God can provide for you water in a wilderness. God can provide anything that you desire. But will God? It depends on your faith. Stand with me tonight. For the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. I said the just shall live by faith. I said the just shall live by faith. If you can believe, all things are possible. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, God can make a way. God will make a way if you trust him. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and he shall direct your path. Bow your heads with me just now. I'm about to hand over to the man of God. But bow your heads in the presence of God bow your heads in the presence of God and right where you are I want you to make an intelligent decision that God from this moment onward I am going to trust you I'm going to trust you God I'm going to trust you I'm going to trust you God I trust you I'm not going to lean anymore to my own understanding. I'm not going to analyze the circumstances or the situation. I'm going to trust you. That you are the God that cannot fail. And you are the God that there is nothing too hard for you. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Make a constructive decision that God I'm going to trust you. With all my heart all your mind all your spirit you're surrendering it all to him right now right where you are you're making that decision as moses did right there and then just so stand still and see the salvation of the lord talk to yourself tonight and say i'm going to be still and know that god is god he shall be exalted in the hearts. He shall be he's already exalted in the heavens and he shall be exalted in the heart. The God of Jacob is my refuge. He is my very present help in time of trouble. So though all type of things are moving around me, I will be still and know that you are God. And you can do anything but fail. Spirit of the living, hands raised, eyes closed everywhere, huh? Fall of 
afresh receive what you came for tonight if you are sick receive healing right now spirit of the living God for afresh before we sing any further tonight is there any person in the service you're not a Christian you're not saved and you'd like us to pray with you tonight if you're here could you raise your hand right now if you want us to pray with you you're in the service tonight you're not saved and you want us to pray with you tonight is there anybody tonight is there anyone no one all right spirit of the oh, God Almighty those watching on you stream a number of persons been watching the program I checked it some minutes ago some time ago a number of you are watching right now receive that breakthrough you need right now it may be on YouTube and Facebook the same anointing that is in this house is right where you are right now ask him to touch you him to minister to you right now. Melt me. Mold me. Mold me and fill me, oh spirit of the living God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I appreciate I appreciate all the ministers here tonight. We really appreciate you all for coming. And those in the congregation visiting church, we appreciate you coming. Amen. Amen. Huh? Is there somebody raised that they want to get saved? Did anybody raise that they want to get saved? Amen. We appreciate you coming here tonight. In the same distance from your church to here. The same distance from here to your church. Be blessed. We don't pronounce any benediction to refresh my downstairs, right? Be refresh yourself downstairs. We'll see you tomorrow. Those who can come back tomorrow, come back tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. It's getting better every night until tomorrow. In the middle of the night, when my back against the wall, Jesus taught me how to pray. In the middle of the night In the middle of the night See you tomorrow When my back against the wall Jesus taught me how to pray In the middle of the night In the Jesus taught me how to pray In the middle of the night In the middle of the night Jesus taught me how to pray In the middle of the night I am blind I am blind